David's reaction to the deaths of both King Saul and Jonathan is kind of simultaneously understandable and also kind of odd. Um, now, in terms of Jonathan, I, I think it's very easy for us to understand this. We know in Scripture that Jonathan and David were very, very, very close. Uh, were you know pretty much best friends. It, it kind of had that kind of relationship. Uh, where they, it was almost like they were blood brothers, uh, even though they were not. Uh, so, of course, the death of Jonathan was going to leave David greatly grieved and, and leave David in a state where he, you know, he would be calling uh, for the, uh, the entire nation of Israel to be in mourning. But Saul is a little bit more unusual. I mean, this is a man that we know, uh, you know, the grace of God moved away from. Uh, when David was starting to interact with him, uh, Saul's kind of mental faculties were starting to go away. He tried to kill David on multiple occasions. Uh, so it, it seems so weird that David would you know, write this sort of, uh, you know, song that, honestly, mostly spends the time mourning the death of Saul, mourning the death of Israel's first king. And it, this, to me, I think is a beautiful example of what really sets David apart from Saul himself. David always understood that even though he was anointed, uh, Saul was anointed as well. And Saul was in the position of king. And that meant that God still was, you know, keeping him there and that you know it, that it, when David would take uh, that position it would not be because he himself led a rebellion and overthrew Saul and killed him and all this other type of stuff it would be because God brought him to that position uh, and uh, in this case he has uh, so David throughout all of those hor horrible things that Saul did never really hated on Saul. Everything we see in scripture says that he was still very loving of Saul, very protective of Saul, uh, you know, and protected of the Lord's anointed and respectful of the Lord's anointed. Uh, you know, he even had an opportunity to kill Saul and he didn't. He even went and showed Saul that this, that he, he didn't do it, that he let him go. And so this kind of lament that David has is really coming from a bit of his character uh, that is very much in tune with who God is and what God wants us to do. Uh, Jesus says later on in scripture that we are to love our enemies and pray for them as well. Uh, you know, Jesus does not give a lot of space for Christians in terms of who they are allowed to love and not love. Because uh, if we're supposed to love our neighbors, we're supposed to love our enemies, well, then we're pretty much supposed to love everyone. Uh, and this is a beautiful example earlier in Scripture of somebody carrying that out, of somebody loving someone who should be considered an antagonist to them, uh, you know, even with all their difficulties and issues. And it's something that we as believers should be willing to emulate as well, though it is incredibly hard to do. Uh, you know, when we are wronged by people, uh, you know, and especially when those when we are wronged in a way that is truly horrible, it's very, very, very hard to continue to love that person. And uh, now I, I should mention with that, uh, you know, uh, loving that person does not necessarily mean that they're in your life or that they are uh, someone you're talking to or in contact with or, or, or anything kind of like that. There are obviously situations where we have to kind of put up a separation between ourselves and someone else, uh, it, you know, but it doesn't mean that you have to uh, just outright hate that person, that you have to, you know, continue to carry a grudge. We should be working to kind of let go of those grudges uh, and and forgive that person, uh, though that does not mean necessarily a restoration of that of that uh, relationship. And, and that does take time. That's not something that happens overnight. And it takes it takes a it can take a really long time, especially with really bad things. But it is something that we should emulate. And it, if David is able to do that with somebody uh, who attempted to murder him on multiple occasions, uh, you know, I think that we should be able to do that as well uh, with the help of God for anyone in our own lives as well, anyone who wrongs us in our own lives. Uh, so that we should, you know, try to emulate this, try to be like David in this sense. We should be loving our enemies, we should be praying for them as well. 
uh, you know, within the context of what is appropriate within whatever that situation is, uh, because that is what is expected from us from God. And it is something that honestly is ultimately healthy for us. It is healthy psychologically to be able to, you know, process these uh, issues we have with people and eventually let them go. That is something that we have to get to, though it did, does indeed take time, but it is indeed time uh, that is well spent. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you all to join me for our last worship song today. <laughs> 